WRLR sports programming is made possible in part through the support of Jersey Mike's in Round Lake Beach. Jersey Mike serves authentic Northeastern style sub sandwiches that are fresh sliced and fresh grilled. Their menu offers items for students and teachers like the giant sub. Complete menu details available now at jerseymikes.com. If your sports team or organization is looking to raise funds, Jersey Mike's and Round Lake Beach can tell you how. They're located at 536 East Rollins Road, and their number is 224 757 5391. You're listening to 98.3 FM, WRLR LP, Round Lake, Illinois. All right, hello, everyone. It's Thursday, February 20th, 2020. You're listening to Lake County Sports Talk, also known as the John and Joe Show, the only source for sports talk exclusive of Lake County, Illinois. I'm John Kerr, sports writer for the Lake County News Sun and Tribune Media, as always, joined in our WRLO Round Lake Beach studios here in Round Lake Beach by our producer and sound engineer, Norm Mary, with a little, uh, little, little rocket man. Crocodile Just, Rock? There you yeah. go. Yeah. I love Elton John. Great movie, so uh, we had to get him on. He's on that the three-year farewell tour, I think, Elton John, right? Uh, coming yeah, to... he's coming back for the third time on his farewell <laughs> right, tour. Yeah. So, yeah, That's right. right. <laughs> I saw him with Billy Joel a few times, so I don't, I don't know if I'm going to go see Elton uh, solo. But, uh, well, good stuff. And, of course, joined right next to me here, as always, is Joe Porsche of the John and Joe Show, Daily Herald Prep columnist and Channel 7 Morning Show commentator. Mm-hmm. Joe hey, Aguilar. Man. Hey, how you doing, guys? Doing good, Joe. Well, hey, Joe, we're uh, we're going to get right to it today because we've got kind of a first uh, time here in our yeah in the history of our show here at the uh, WRLR studio. We have an in studio guest, in studio live. Normally, do we say live in studio, or do we won't say he's we can dead. say live. It's all good. Uh, yeah, sometimes that gets <laughs> in case you thought he our, in case you thought he was deceased. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, live in studio. Uh, Jay Iden, head basketball coach uh, at Round Lake for the guys who are nineteen and nine. They would think we'd be saying that two years ago. They were they were they went winless last year, uh, nine wins, and actually they, um, you know, they got the nine kind of quickly. I think, and then the last week or so, I uh, just didn't couldn't win any more games. But uh, anyway, Jason Studio, thanks for joining us here today. Of course, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to lie, of you know, scrolling through Twitter, I see the podcast all the time, and awesome, you know. Remember looking at it and going, one day I'll be on that podcast. There you go. Well, we've, been, we've been talking uh, uh, for a while about getting you on, especially after you guys got off to such a, a great start. And uh, you guys were a good story a year ago. And this year, as I mentioned, 19-9, and nine, you were a game back of Wakanda. where you doing the show live on Thursday. Um, and you played tonight at Wakanda. I saw the first game with you guys. It was a fantastic game. A lot of up and down uh, basketball. You guys got off to a... Uh, uh, a big lead there. We kind of came back uh, on you, and you you uh, pulled it on at the end. But so tonight, the situation, John, is uh, if Round Lake wins, they are, are tied for first place with uh, one game remaining for each team. If they lose, if uh, Wakanda wins it outright because they'd be two up with with one to go. So, but regardless of what happens tonight, it's really been a uh, fantastic run for you guys. Uh, what's this season been like? From your perspective, from your player's perspective? Uh, from my perspective, I mean, man, it's been a roller coaster ride. It feels like past two years, not really just one year. Um, demanding, extremely exciting. Um, you know, and that's what it takes. It's 24 hours. I moved to the community a couple minutes away from the school just to be there whenever the kids need to get in the gym. Um, <clears throat> But, yeah, it's just been exciting beyond belief. Um, almost happened before we expected. Yeah. You know, you never – but the kids have totally bought in. Um, yeah, it's just really exciting. Yeah. You have a loss for words to, like, sum it up, still being in the middle of it. Uh, well, we should mention Jay played at Lake Zurich for uh, for John Zarr way back in the day, not that long ago. You're mid, are you early 30s? How old are you? I'm 32. 32, yeah. I'm at that okay. age, I'm not counting anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so you come from Lake Zurich. I mean, Lake Zurich to Round Lake, I know they're not that far apart miles-wide, I guess, but uh, it's a different culture um, at Round Lake. What are We had Crystal Garza on back when he was uh, – uh, the football coach at Round Lake before he went to Zion Benton. Just about some of the obstacles, the things you deal with at Round Lake that 
you know, they probably don't deal with that Lake Zurich necessarily or, or Stevenson or Libertyville. What are some of the things, Jay, you, you have to, uh, to deal with, with with your basketball team and keeping everyone on the same page daily? Yeah, I mean, kind of an interesting fact. People always recognize he's a Lake Zurich guy. But my great aunt and uncle were actually some of the first property holders in Round Lake. Is that right? That's right. So I always say that through and through... I'm a Round Lake guy. I just okay. happened to grow up in Lake Zurich. Um, but, you know, every school has its obstacles. Every community, sure. they're all unique. Coaching, no matter where you're at, it's a tough gig. Um, the most important thing is that it was turning around the culture, um, people expecting us to lose. But any obstacles really never come up and rear their ugly head because we have such great support. In the school, our administration, all the way up to our superintendent. Our janitors are fantastic. Everyone, teachers work with us all the time. Even the community, they love it. The community is enjoying this big time. Well, it was my first chance to go to a game in your gymnasium Tuesday night with Joe. Joe's been there a few times, and I, I cover the North Suburban Conference primarily, giving this year doing more NLCC games, and been impressed with you know some of the crowds there, and certainly at your gym. And we talked to some of your players afterwards, like you know Devonte and Hakeem, about that question about the student support, because when you go to successful programs, that's what you see. You see that the students come out on a weeknight. Hey, they have other things they could be doing, like studying or hanging out with their friends, but they're at the games. And then you see the athletic director there. You see the principal there. Maybe not for every basketball game because you have 30 of them, but still you see that administrative support. Um, Did that take some time to cultivate that? Was that already there when you took a job? Because let's be honest, Jay, the team before you took over won zero games. So I, I so this is something it's it's remarkable to me what you've done in that two year. You had to have good players. You've obviously you've got good coaching and good assistant coaching, but it doesn't happen without that support. So did you know that going in, or have you been a little bit maybe surprised by how quickly they've embraced this team? Um, it was definitely there from day one. I I really thought this over, and I was actually the announcer for. Three years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny because right you and Jeremy that. have kind of switched roles now. Jeremy Jeremy Fisher is now doing the PA. Was okay. the guy you replaced? Yeah, I actually remember turning around and say, walking up to you and saying, "Hey, Joe," and you're like, "Jay Iden, number four, Lake Zurich." <laughs> yeah, every, <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's gonna be just a trivia question. The PA, the coach swapping. I don't know if that's happened before. And, 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 and yeah, feel free to hit us up on Twitter if that's happened before. <laughs> but. You know, I was just teaching there, and I had a great relationship with the administration. I knew the school and the kids were just dying for it, for just a turnaround. And I could tell by the support in the classroom. They're always there for us for everything, and I knew that if I was going to go into it 100%, they knew that I was authentic and that that's the type of people in our school district that they back up 100%. Your two best players, I think it's fair to say, are Hakeem Williams and Deviante McNeil. Hakeem is, they're both juniors, so is Nick Pierre, who was there for the the, the winless season. Uh, John and I had a good conversation with Nick the other night after he hit the uh, the game-winning three in the final minute against Grays Lake Central. Um, but Hakeem is a kid whose brother played at Round Lake, but Hakeem was out in Iowa, and Clinton, I believe he was telling us. Um, and then he moved here. You kind of probably knew right away that, the kid could play. And then Deviante's a kid who you called up second half of last season, uh, but he's just had a, a bust-down season, averaging a double-double. When did you kind of figure that we got a couple guys here who could carry us? Again, like you said, maybe it's it's come a year early. Uh, that happens sometimes, right? But uh, when did you kind of think, we, we got enough here, or we got pieces in place where in the past they've either had certain players, but they haven't been able to keep them together or keep them around um, for the duration. I'm not going to lie. Uh, even though I was behind the mic, I've, I'm always a coach. So sure. I was always kind of scouting. And that's how I would look at the game anyways. Even before I knew the position was going to be open, I'd peek into the freshman gym, kind of see what was going on. I always carried notepads with me. And then when it seemed like it was going to open up and I was getting more and more serious about it, I was peeking my head in the freshman gym more mm-hmm. and seeing what was going on. And 
writing names down, and they were there. And it's definitely, it took me a long time to get back into it, but I saw the parts, and it was like, what is going to glue us together? What do these kids need? And they're just like any other team, any other kid. They want to feel like they're cared for, they're loved, Mm -hmm. they want to have a good time, and they are, especially their families, want to know that I care because they give me tons of time to be with their kids. Yeah. So, you know, that was the first part. I saw all the pieces. Now, the Akeem, him transferring in, his cousin Xavier, he told us he was moving out, and he was one of the kids I wrote on the list. I'm like, (laughs) man. He goes, don't worry, my cousin's coming in. He's better than me. His cousin's a heck of an athlete. Like, all right, we'll see. I was actually at the doctor. I was sitting there in the waiting room, and my cell phone went off. And my assistants were like, this Hakeem kid is the real deal. I said, all right, I'll see it when I believe it. But, you know, we started three sophomores last year. But then... And then Hakeem went down late in the spring in AAU with a knee. But then this fall, I kind of started playing the Lou Holtz card. I didn't want to get too excited. (laughs) But then I kind of felt like I was missing out on a moment and an opportunity. Rather than being hard-nosed, maybe enthusiasm was the answer. And at some point during this fall in an open gym, just watching them, just going at each other, just a random open gym. I'm thinking, we might have something here. Thought we'd be too young, but I'm still thinking I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. For every yeah. game, I'm not <laughs> sure. Right, right. No, and, that way. and certainly Tuesday night, there were stretches of that game where we weren't sure, right, how that was going to end, and you're going against a program that maybe had a longer track record of thinking who's going to be a little more mentally tough in this situation, but you guys proved to be that team. And again, our guest here in studio is Jay Iden, the head coach at Round Lake Beach. I'm sorry, Round Lake High School. Excuse me, we're in Round Lake Beach. Excuse me, make sure we make the distinction there. Um, <laughs> the Panthers are, are playing uh, Wakanda tonight uh, for a chance to tie or, or tie Wakanda. Mm-hmm. Kind of for first place in the NLCC. And, and Jay, looking at your results this year, uh, you know, I was, again, we asked some of the guys last night about was there a moment or, or even a stretch of games where you guys felt like, hey, this team has turned the corner. Maybe it was a year ago, too, as well, where you saw some of those signs. But I'm looking at some of these wins here. You, you, you beat North Chicago in kind of late January. You had a, a close win over Antioch right after that. Uh, then you had a win over Grant, and then the kind of a, a, a close loss to Grays Lake North before you beat them earlier in the week. Was there a time of the season where you felt like, okay, this team, we know we have the talent, but we have to learn how to win? And did it happen during that stretch, or was it kind of a gradual progression? Yeah, there was definitely a moment. Uh, we got off to a really hot start, and I was concerned about that with how young we were and just the history of it all. And I didn't want it to get too big for the kids. I I think I almost like started overthinking it. I started talking to our coaches. Do we have to like coach these kids on how to deal with success? How do we do that? And really, they're just kids. That's adult thinking. And we just kind of started riding with it. But the moment definitely was right around the MLK tournaments. Um, Joe, you were at that game when I benched all the starters. <laughs> Things got yeah. a little tense. <laughs> then we went into the MLK tournament, lost to Lake Zurich, um, lost to Lakes at home, which is always tough to lose your uh, coaching mentor. Yeah, Chris Snyder. We'll yeah. talk about him in a minute. Um, then we went and battled with Buffalo Grove all the way down to the fourth quarter tie game with like four minutes left, I want to say, lost by ten. Getting more and more tense. It felt like a powder keg. Got to wake up two days later, play a tough Willowbrook team. Mm -hmm. And we're just all sitting on the bus, kind of like, like we're definitely a family. One of those, we're just like, I can't stand you. And you guys can't stand (laughs) me. But but we love each other so much. (laughs) And I don't know what it was. I think we just had a really tough practice. Um. Defense binds us. Defense is, our pro, is what our program is all about. And it was just too – at that point of the season, too, around MLK tournaments, everyone's going 90 minutes. We went like two and a half hours of just all defensive drills. And then 
that's kind of where and that was the point where everyone's like, okay, Round Lake lost four in a row. They're supposed to be losing. And we kind of talked about that. Mm-hmm. And then we went on the run again. Yeah. So, yeah, it was definitely, you know, that four-game losing streak is where we turned it around. Yeah, and I think it was after the Wakanda game where – you had said, uh, or one of your players had said, like, this was a, a moment for us to, it's like, you have the, you know, are we just going to basically, paraphrasing, pack it in now, or we can come back and say, no, the team we were early in the year, that's who we are, and we're not just going to pack it in. But it was after that, I think that, that, I mean, that was a big win for you guys. Wakanda, I think, had just lost maybe to Grays Lake Central, but it was it was a big win for your program to kind of show that we're just not going to fold here. Um, and rally, but I, I wanted to ask you um, about how you got into coaching. This is a, this is a great story. Um, again, graduate of Lake Zurich, uh, but you didn't coach. This was your first head coaching gig when you got it um, two years ago or last year now. Correct. Um, but can you share with us uh, how you got into coaching? Because it went from I don't know. I guess you could say delivering pizzas to uh, delivering uh, passes to your players and drills, maybe. Yeah, I'm never going to live this one down. It's a great story. That's why I ask you about it. So this was like my first true formal gig. I mean, I worked some camps, um, Future Stars camp. Shout out to Coach Ward and Future Stars. (laughs) Um, A lot of great coaches were there. I mean, Chris Snyder, Nazos, Mike Dunn, um, Vince Dorn. I mean, Vince Duran, Dorn. um, (laughs) Tons of guys were there at that camp, but... You know, it's working camps. But I was delivering pizzas, college kid, and I saw a ticket come up, and I was the last guy in line to deliver, and it said full package athletics. And, I mean, you go into a pizza delivery place, especially the Lake Lake Zurich one, it's a bunch of piranhas in there. (laughs) I just grabbed the pizzas and said, I got to take this one, guys. (laughs) Um, Knocked on the door, introduced myself, and then... 90 minutes later, after sitting in the owner, Steve Pratt's house, he said, how about you come coach for us? And then next thing you know, we're traveling the country together. I'm coaching in front of Tom Izzo. It was just really cool. So and what yeah, was the pizza? Was this a, I mean, was this like a uh, meat lover's oh, delight? Oh, it was disgusting. Was this, uh, I would, I would it hope was, so. It yeah, anchovies. If it's Pratt, it had to be pepperoni, no, yeah. sausage. I mean, double sausage. It maybe was some, just everything. Maybe some chicken on there. I mean, I'm not a chicken pizza guy, but maybe. <laughs> no, my car reeked for days. So just... <laughs> just the stench of that. Wow. And so, no, to, you delivered the pizza to full package athletic and then and then while you just happen to strike up a conversation with steve pratt and he said why don't you come to my house and let's talk more no, it was or? actually to his house okay he okay. opened the door and he's like hey man how's it going I'm like 19 blah 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 so you didn't know him at all no not at all so how do you how did you initiate that conversation with him then and that <clears throat> i'm interested in coaching just you're steve pratt right he's like Yes, I am. It says that on the <laughs> ticket here. I said, I'm Jay Iden. I love basketball. You want to talk hoops for a little bit? And he said, you know what? Come on in. That I, was I, it. I, mean, I, I love stories like wow. that because there's so many kids, whether it's coaching or whatever you want to get into uh, professionally or you think you might want to, and how you get your foot in the door, in this case, literally, <laughs> I, I guess. Um, there are so many where it just starts with something innocuous or something mundane, but it leads to something big. And a lot of times it's you, you're the one who has to maybe get out of your comfort zone. Maybe um, you have to be the initiator and who knows where it leads to. But I think that's such a, we're up, John and I always, you know, we, we, we love the life lesson stuff. That's why we love sports. I think in part uh, the coaching, the relationships, uh, but that's, that's such a fantastic story you have. And I'm, I don't, I don't know if you've shared that with your players, but that's real life, and look where I know you're starting. You're just starting your career here as a coach, but uh, what a fantastic example and a, a, for your for your players and for anyone who's listening to this or this radio show right now or who's heard your story before. Yeah, it's an awesome story. Thank you. But I mean, I'm sure there are some more. I'm sure there are more poignant tidbits in there. With so, it. if you tell yeah. the story to your players. You're not necessarily subtly saying, oh, by the way, Domino's is hiring right now. <laughs> no, no. Little no. Caesars is hiring, so no. just FYI. I would not uh, they do recommend. Tip, they do tip very well. It is a grind. 
I pizza bet. delivery is a grind. I bet. Yeah, but it's it, it but, forged me. Well, to, to, to your <laughs> point though, it's it's you. You could say, okay, why was I the person to deliver that pizza to that particular place? I could have been the other pizza delivery guy, right? Who did that? And you could say maybe at some point you'd have gotten into coaching because it's in your mm-hmm. blood. But still, as Joe said, you saw an opportunity. We know Steve Pratt. Uh, doesn't sound doesn't that sounds like something Steve would do if you want to talk hoops with somebody? He's willing to talk to you about it. But he maybe had time at that particular. He saw something in you, and anybody who's had success will can point to mentors in their life. Yeah, and sometimes they appear at the most random times, oh, and absolutely. you have to be ready for that when it does happen. So. Um, our last few minutes here with uh, Jay Iden, who's the head basketball coach at Round Lake. And we're talking about the program, building a program really, literally from scratch. I mean, a team that won no games mm-hmm. to now competing for a conference championship. Again, his rise in the coaching ranks. And I do want to ask you about your day job as a teacher, because I noticed on your signature in the emails back and forth, it said business incubator. So explain that, what that is exactly, what you do uh, in between uh, coaching basketball. As as we know, you guys are teachers during the day, and then you sort of change your shoes and your pants, and you go out there and Mm -hmm. coach basketball. What exactly is that position? Uh, So the business incubator, it was a brand-new position. I mean, I guess it kind of goes back to even the pizza thing, always looking for opportunities Mm -hmm. and just seizing them. Um, I was at Lakes prior to that. Um, and I got a phone call just randomly asking if I wanted to go have lunch and talk about this new program. Basically, to boil it down, kids form small groups. You go through the lean startup process. And by the end of the class, the kids have a product and they pitch it to like our board of investors. And so it goes through the whole process, teaching kids hands-on, real life, um, it's simple, but you got to do it right, all the little things. And that carries over basketball as well. I mean, a little side note. So instead of, I went to business school. I was an econ finance major. And where, like, where'd you go? Uh, do we have enough time for that? <laughs> uh, sorry, Dad. Uh, <laughs> I, went to, I went to Iowa for that, and then recession hit. I remember brushing my teeth, looking in the mirror, watching CNBC and like stock market just crashing. I'm like, ooh, they're called dad, not going to get a job here. And my parents are unbelievably successful, I mean, supportive, and they believe happiness is success. And he said, you do whatever you want to do. You always wanted to be a teacher. You always, we always thought you would be a coach because I was always kind of thinking ISU. He goes, go to ISU. Um. And so, yeah, that's where I went. And so this class, you throw out all those 150-page business plans, and it's called a BMC. Basically, you can fit your business Mm -hmm. on one page. Mm -hmm. And actually, when I was trying to figure out how to, if I was going to take this program, I designed the program and what I wanted to look like in this business model canvas. So that's the class, and I also teach wealth management because that's what I had a degree for in my not going to get any financial advisors in trouble. <laughs> hey, I, I, we could be talk. We could talk to you all all show out here. Uh, we'll let you go here in a minute, but I, I got one more for you, and I hope you don't mind sharing this story too. We, we were talking early in the year, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you played for for John Zara at Lake Zurich. Uh, I, I love John, um, his family, fantastic guy. But I asked you, go. So how do you, you know, how to go with with John Zar? And uh, you go. I think you were telling me, you know, you weren't happy one time with, I don't know if it was your, your playing time or whatever, but you mentioned your dad, and that's what triggered the, this, uh, is that you said, you, I think your, maybe your dad drove you to the school, and he told you, you go in and talk to him. Is that right? And you kind of cleared the air, and you kind of you, know, you walked away, and you, you shook hands with Coach Zarr, and but I just like that idea of you having to man up there even though you were still in high school am i accurate that do i recall correctly what yeah, you're yeah. Talking about? yeah um yeah it was my junior year coming in and just learning his ways i mean if you know who he is he's a tough guy yeah and there were times i hated that guy but i love him <laughs> um i wouldn't be the man i am today teacher i am especially the coach i am today without him um but yeah i was just really struggling almost to that point where i just didn't want to play anymore and we don't quit in our family. Yeah. 
And so my dad told me, get in the car, drop me off at Zara's house. I knocked on the door. He was kind of surprised to see me. I just kind of like stuttered, uh, <laughs> coach, uh, can we talk? <laughs> Come on in. And just kind of looked at me, and we had to hash it out. And he said, basically my dad said, Keep knocking. If he's not there, wait. Go to the court. Shoot hoops. I'll pick you up in like three hours at the basketball court nearby. And from that point on, no storybook endings, but I ended up being a captain for Czar. Well, and that's mm. you know that that qualifies as a storybook ending. I mean, I, I love that. First of all, your, your dad telling you, no, you know, daddy's not going to take care of it for you. You you go talk to him. You go to his. I didn't realize, realize it was his house. You go to his house. You talk to him, um, and you handle it. Whether you're going to be happy with the end result anyway, but he'll talk to you. You talk to him like like men. And again, I I, I think that's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, great story. And I think yeah. it's it's obvious that you talk about mentors, but certainly your parents are significantly influential in your life. Yes. Your dad obviously and how is. Important that is. Yeah. And somebody having somebody, but again, and not. Letting you make, I mean, and you as a coach now, and I'm sure any coach that we talk to deals with these situations, but having that parental support, because that could have been a situation that could have gone sideways very, very quickly. Sure. And if your dad had injected himself into that situation, that may not have gone so well. But he said, hey, this is up to you. You have to you you have to mend this relationship and decide for yourself. So, again, that's one. If you look at moments where you yep. kind of grew up, you know that would be one of those moments right. that kind of stand out to us. So, uh, and speaking of growing up, your Panthers certainly are right before our eyes here, Coach. So, best of luck tonight. I know Round Lake again facing Wakanda tonight. A lot at stake. It's been a while since we've said about Round Lake boys basketball, but tonight a lot at stake. I don't know if Joe's going to be out there tonight or not. Or I or, won't. Uh, Trisha yeah, Babcock will okay. be out there. I'm covering a girls' regional final, but uh, both teams going for their 20th win tonight, too, in this game. Yeah, which wow. Yep. Doesn't happen for either program uh, every year. This is not Stevenson, you know, <laughs> we're talking about. Um, so, regardless of what we're happens tonight. Well, that'd be fantastic. I mean, but regardless of what happens tonight, I mean, congrats on, on what you guys have done. And we know, um, you know, where you guys are, you know, this is by far not the last we, we've heard of your group, especially, I mean, you're, you know, with McNeil and Williams, Pierre, all, all juniors. And yeah, uh, we're going to be here from them for a while. Yeah, yeah well, this let's, is, let's hope so. Yeah, so no uh, doubt. But anyway, we, we love having you in here, man. This is, yeah, uh, this this is a great. blast. I'm yeah. loving this. Yeah. Thank you. My cousin's got his own radio show on 95.1 Will Rock. Is that right? Yeah, so. Uh, disc jockey? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah well, good. So we've got our own disc jockey right here. His name is Norm Norman. Marion. Ah, every now and then. <laughs> coach got great pipes, though. I can see how he'd be All the right, announcer yeah. of the game prior to being a coach. But uh, yes. Thank you. Way to go, Jay. <laughs> Thank you. Well, the good thing about being the PA guy is you kind of get to go home and just kind of have an adult beverage afterwards, and, and your day's over. As a, as a high school coach, not quite the same. <laughs> no, 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 not the same. <laughs> a lot more game film. No question. All right, Jad, appreciate it. Uh, we'll look forward to talking again real soon. Uh, we're going to hit our first break here on the John and Joe Show here on a Thursday. We'll be right back with actually Dale Eggert, wrestling coach at Libertyville, uh, state finals going on Champaign. Uh, we'll come back and talk some more hoops as well on the John and Joe show here on a February 20th. We'll be right back. WRLR 98.3 FM. Having trouble moving the ball to finish your divorce or paternity matter? Child support or maintenance payments causing trouble with your salary cap? Sue Kamen is an experienced family law attorney who can coach you through mediation or fire a pass into the end zone at trial. To make an appointment in Antioch, Huntley, or Lake Zurich with Susan E. Kamen and Associates, their number is 847-847-7354. WRLR sports programming is made possible in part through the support of Jersey Mike's in Round Lake Beach. Jersey Mike serves authentic Northeastern-style sub sandwiches that are fresh sliced and fresh grilled. Their menu offers items for students and teachers like the Giant Sub. Complete menu details available now at jerseymikes.com. If your sports team or organization is looking to raise funds, Jersey Mike's and Round Lake Beach can tell you how. They're located at 536 East Rollins Road, and their number is 224-757-5391. Today's sports broadcast is made possible by O'Keefe Lewis and Bruno PC. Proud to sponsor another season of Lake County High School Sports Broadcasts on WRLR 98.3 FM. Helping home buyers, sellers, and others with real estate transactions. O'Keefe Lewis and Bruno PC can be reached at 847-675-4790. You're listening to 98.3 FM, WRLR LP, Round Lake, Illinois. You get a shiver in the dark, it's raining in the park, but meantime, 
We're back here on a Thursday, of course, as always, live here at WRLR, Round Lake Beach Studios. The John and Joe Show here. Again, John Kerr, Joe Aguilar, and Norm Marin. We had a great conversation with Jay Iden, head basketball coach at Round Lake Beach. Again, the Panthers, huge game against um, Wakanda tonight. A lot of stake in the NLCC. And actually, with boys basketball, we're going to have some news here coming up um, in a couple of days because we've got the brackets coming out, the seedings coming out here with boys basketball. Uh, they're actually in Class 4A. We've got three regionals in Lake County. So Grant, Warren, Stevenson will all host regionals in Class 4A. All of those will feed into the prospect sectional. And then in Class 3A, we've got North Chicago and Deerfield will host regionals, and they will all feed into the Grays Lake North sectional. So we'll definitely be talking some some boys hoops here um, in the coming weeks. And as Joe mentioned earlier, a lot going on here with girls basketball as well. Um, in terms of myself, I'll be actually at Deerfield tonight watching Wakanda girls face Deerfield in the Class 3A regional. Um, and Norm's got some news as well. Yeah, we're going to be there tonight. It's going to go live on WRLR right here, 98.3. Well, that game is going to be live on this uh, tonight. Rusty, Deerfield, who else Rusty, is going to be on that call? Uh, some guy named Norm. No, we don't. I'm, <laughs> have you heard his tapes? He's, he's, I'm not sure we should put him on the air. I, I, I worry about him sometimes, but he likes to have a lot of fun. And so hopefully he'll bring it to the game with uh, Wakanda and Deerfield. Yeah, and he's got a pretty good taste in music, I must say, as well. A very eclectic taste in music. So uh, <laughs> lots of lots of good stuff here. So good good to know. Rusty. And, believe, uh, it starts at 7, so pregame, okay. 6.55, somewhere around there. Yeah, and so I'll be there as well against Wakanda Deerfield. It'll be a regional final in Class 3A. And, uh, Joe, you said you will be also at a Class 3A regional final. Yeah, Foray, I'll be at uh, Car- Carmel, yeah, with, with with Hersey, the top seed. Haven't seen Hersey all season, so uh, you know, we've got the good freshmen, so looking forward to seeing them play against Carmel, which we thought might be, uh, you know, could lose that game against Zion Benton the other night, the, uh, the quarterfinal, or the, uh, the semifinal, rather, and they got the victory pretty handily uh, from what I could tell from Rusty's uh, story. In our Daily Herald, so uh, it should be a fun guy game tonight. Uh, yeah, we got uh, a few regional finals tonight. Uh, tomorrow night, Friday night, Lake Forest and Stevenson, which we've kind of figured it would be uh, the girls' side. Uh, Grace Lake Central girls playing for a regional final tonight. They should, I would think, they should win handily. They got Crystal Lake South on a Prairie Ridge, so fun night. Yeah, no doubt. And I think that four A one. And when we come back after the interview with Dale. Want to make sure we talk a little bit about that game because that's certainly one that, you know, from a Lake County perspective, again, two programs that have have done very well over the last you know four or five years. Teams that are used to playing in regional finals. A Lake Forest team that was a sectional champion a year ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, two teams have split the regular season matchups. So I, you know, that that's a game that I think I, know I will be there. I think you will be there as well yes. on Friday night. So a lot of interest in that game as well. So in here, yeah, and, and Joe, I'm sorry, ahead. I'd be remiss. Lake Zurich, Libertyville tonight, girls. Uh, at, at Lake Zurich, Libertyville has won, what are they up to, 22 in a row now? Um, facing a you know, Lake Zurich team without Ella Gilbertson, but that, that's also tonight for uh, the regional championship. Yeah, lots going on here with, from a basketball perspective. And again, as I said, the top of this segment, we're going to talk also maybe um, some boy stuff as well, kind of as we go, because the seedings and brackets are going to be coming out here over the next couple of days. So a lot to talk about in terms of how our Lake County teams shake down. But First, we're going to switch gears here. We're going to talk wrestling uh, this weekend down in Champaign. It's the individual wrestling championships going on uh, in Champaign, which I think has been going on down there for for decades, certainly as long as maybe this man has been coaching at Libertyville High School. We're excited to be joined by the head wrestling coach at Libertyville. His name is Dale Edgar. Dale, how are you? I'm doing well. Ready for some action in about two hours. Yeah, no doubt. And I know you are uh, you in Champaign, or are you uh, checking the hotel, or where are you guys right now? Yeah, we're, we're, we've already weighed in back at the hotel. The round, first round of 3A is supposed to start at 4.30. So, Dale, give us some insight on your state qualifiers. I know you have three of them this year. Tell us a little bit about them and also their weight classes and kind of – you know, at this stage of the process, when you're facing good wrestlers pretty much in any, in, in any round, what does it take to get past this first preliminary day and then to kind of get through what's, what's a really a long chore down there in Champaign? 
Yeah, well, our, our first wrestler at 106, Kalen Riley, he's a sophomore, um, has a really solid year, 33 and 4, and all his losses are to, uh, very well, he's ranked number 6, so all his losses are to higher-ranked wrestlers. Our next wrestler, Elon Hurd, he's a senior. He is at 152, and uh, he's ranked number 1 in the state right now. He did lose once this season. It was to the number 1-ranked guy at 2A, a two-time uh, defending state champion. Uh, we think he's got a really good shot to, to do well. Our third competitor is Josh Knuton. He is a sophomore at 160, and he has not been ranked. I think he's maybe an honorable mention at like uh, 19 or 20. Uh, a little bit of a surprise, but he's had a very good year and um, has wrestled good people very closely and put it together at the sectionals and slipped through with a, with a fourth. Yeah, I think the big thing heading into the first round is um, not so much worried about the magnitude of the situation. Just do what you got to do to get by that first round match. We all know who our guys are, uh, have a little scouting report on them. And uh, now it's up for us to execute what we've been, what's been working for us all year. Hey, Dale, it's Joe Aguilar at the Daily Herald. Long time. Hey, uh, how are you? Good, doing good. Good. Thanks for joining us here again. I got to ask you, it's yeah. it's Elon Hurd, as I pronounce it, correct? Um, yes, uh, Elon. E- Elon. Elon Hurd. Uh, yep. What a great name. E apostrophe. I didn't name it with an apostrophe. I'm, I'm all in on that. Um, yeah. Yeah. He's a transfer, right? Did I did I read correctly in one of our Daily Herald stories by John Bumballas? Yeah, he was fourth in the state at Ohio last year for LaSalle High School in Cincinnati. Okay, yeah, you, you look. We had a couple a picture of him in our paper last week, and the one today actually, and I think I, actually one of the new sons. Like the body does not lie. He he's built like, I mean that's like the the, the proverbial V shape. I mean he looks like he's a linebacker, Dale. Yeah, but he's, he's only 5'6", and yes, he's got a shape that of uh, not very many high school wrestlers, <laughs> to be honest. Well, I guess he could play, play nose, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sure he could. You know, wrestlers <laughs> play football, right? And they, they seem a lot heavier than they really are. Yeah, unfortunately, he's, he's, he's a senior, right, Coach? I mean, Coach yeah. Jones would love to have him maybe on the defensive <laughs> line next year, sure. right, for the Wildcats. Sure. But uh, Joe mentioned a herd, but uh, the, the story about about Elon is how he came to Libertyville, and Quite this is story. this is remarkable. And tell us exactly how he got to to. This is not somebody who, you know, where dad got a job in the area and the family moved in here for a year. I mean, this is a lot more layered. Actually, it's, it's a pretty simple story, but it's very it's very unusual and just remarkable and wonderful and. Tell us exactly how Elon got to Libertyville. Um, not exactly sure of the circumstances that he became homeless, but he happened to become homeless the week of the University of Illinois recruiting weekend in, in mid-September. And so uh, sometimes I was, I was high school coach, great guy. I've known him for many years, Ryan Root. He um, drove Elon to from Cincinnati to the University of Illinois. He was, a, he was a, had already signed to U of, U of I in the spring of his junior year. So um, all the stuff gets packed up in the car. Ryan Root drives him to U of I. They kind of he kind of turns him over to the U of I coaches, and their plan was to have him uh, to spend the school year living on the couch in the apartment of one of their regional training uh, center athletes, and he was going to attend Urbana High School. He had not. He he had just come into uh, Champaign on Friday, and then the. Uh, Pacino's Danny Pacino, our wrestler, who was also a U of I recruit, he was down for the recruiting weekend as well. He he gets to know all the recruits, gets to know Elon, hear his story. Um, Danny's parents were down there as well, so he goes with Ma. He goes, uh, Elon's Elon's homeless. He's going to be living in an apartment of a regional training center wrestler. Would it be okay if we took him in for a senior year? And his his mother said, Yep, because the older brother had moved out of the house and there was a spare bedroom, <laughs> and he decided they're going to bring him back. They they, they told me it was happening. I'm like, get out of here, because you know, I've heard stuff like that before, and it's you know it seemed like real long shot to me. But um, you know, if they're willing, and the next thing I know, he's enrolled on Tuesday of the very next week. And this That's fascinating, yeah. And, and this happened, Dale. Had school already started? Oh yeah, it was mid September. We're about four weeks in. Wow. How, how was he adjusted, uh, Dale? And. Uh, I, I can't fathom what what the young man must be going through, or this, be thrown into this situation. How is he handling? What kind of kid is he? 
Well, in, in some respects, he knows it's the best thing that could ever happen to him. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't a good living situation in Cincinnati, and then he lost what wasn't a good living situation in the first place, then it's not a really good situation for him as a senior in high school to be living with a 25-year-old guy who's got his own things to worry about. Uh, I give all the credit in the world to the uh, Pacinos being willing to do that. They've been, you know, great, you know, parents to him, uh, very involved with his life. Um, you know, the, the schooling's not, it's never easy to come in the middle of a semester and start, you know, you, you're, you're trying to pick up on the, on the same classes, but it's really not the same. And he worked really hard to stay on top of his classes. Uh, I, I give him a whole lot of credit. The second semester is going much better, but he was doing as much as he had to, to, um, keep his head above water and stay eligible but he had to work really hard in terms of his personality he's got a a very nice personality he's kind of like a celebrity around school and uh no lack of friends that's for sure so that part's been very good and dale for you you get yourself a heck of a wrestler and danny gets himself a workout partner (laughs) right right our guest, our guest is Dale Egger here, the Libertyville wrestling coach. Again, the Wildcats have got three wrestlers down at Champaign uh, going on with the individual wrestling championships happening. Actually, beginning today, going through Saturday at the State Farm Center at the University of Illinois. Uh, Dale, you, you mentioned Danny Pacino, state runner-up last year. Uh, yes. But he's not competing. Give us an update. How, how, I mean... I mean, we know injuries happen, unfortunately, uh, in sports, and we see season-ending injuries and so forth. But uh, uh, give us an update on Danny, uh, who, uh, again, that's, that's too bad he, he's not going to get a chance to uh, compete this weekend. Right. He had, uh, it's, it's a heartbreaker. I mean, it's a nightmare for, for, you know, for any coach to have someone that good that's prepared that hard and was ready to compete at the highest level. Um, he sustained a concussion in winning his uh, semifinal match in the regionals and defaulted in the finals. We knew something was wrong, didn't know what, uh, keeping an eye on him. And then during the week, it was obvious that he had a concussion. He was not able to compete in the sectionals, which ended the season. He did not go to the sectionals last week. Um, perhaps he could have, but he happened to get sick uh, over the weekend and did not show up. But he will be at the state. He's doing a lot better. He'll, he'll uh, be at the state tournament supporting his teammates. Um, but looking ahead towards the University of Illinois career. Dale, I haven't covered wrestling in a while, but I, you know, the, the concussions, you know, football coaches get tired of, you know, people saying, ah, they, all they talk about are the concussions in football. They happen in other sports. They happen in cheerleading, soccer. How often, I mean, guys are banging heads in wrestling, I mean, accidentally, I'm sure, all the time. But how uh, common are concussions uh, with your wrestlers? Not common. We have, uh, this is the only one we've had this year. Wow, that's great. I believe we had one two years ago, but I do believe last year we went the whole year without one. So I wouldn't say we get one every year. It it, it can happen, obviously. Of course, it can happen in a lot of sports. Um, But um, glad that we don't, you know. Sorry that football does because it puts, you know, you're counting on a guy and, and all of a sudden he gets he gets nailed and he's out for more than a, mm-hmm. a day or two. I mean he's out for at least a week. So yeah, and if you watch yeah. wrestling, especially the guys at the highest level, you know Dale. I mean these guys are in such great shape, right? I mean the, their their limbs and and these guys are are so elastic in terms of their hips and their knees and their bodies. I mean they're able to 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 get themselves in. Let's just say shapes that <laughs> that appear to the naked eye to where you sort of cringe. I can't right. believe that that guy is, is holding that person and his head is on the mat and his legs right. are straddling him. Yeah. And then they get up and shake hands and, you know, they, they're they fine for the next match. So, And one thing about Danny, Dale, anybody who's had any contact with Danny Pacino, I've been fortunate to talk to Danny a few times over the year. A, a, I mean, and if you know the story and have never spoken to Danny, you would know he's a remarkable individual and a great family. But he'll be the first guy there, right, cheering everybody on. As you said, he will continue his career at the University of Illinois. But his legacy is pretty secure there as a Wildcat wrestler. Right. Uh, no doubt about it. We have only had a handful of two-time All-Staters, and he was already that going into his senior year. Obviously, if he would have uh, got a third All-State honor, that would have been you know the best we've ever had. We haven't had a state champ in 29 years. He was hoping to hoping to be that for sure. Um, yeah, it, it definitely does not take away from his legacy. He just wanted to add to it. 
Yeah, no doubt. And like I said, from a Libertyville, you think about the history of a Libertyville wrestling program, which you just said is pretty remarkable when you think about all the great wrestlers that have been through there. And that kind of leads to the other part of our conversation with you. We wanted to have you on because as somebody like yourself who is, when we think of Libertyville athletics, the name that comes up mm-hmm. is Dale Egger, and yeah. somebody who has been there for as long as you have. Your 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 mom, right, is a Libertyville graduate. Somebody who lives near the school. I'm driving down 176 in the spring and summer, and there's there's Dale walking his dog or sure. you know, going for a, you know doing doing something that right. makes me feel like I need to be going out and exercising. Sure. Um, and so you would be a logical person to write a book about the history of Libertyville Athletics. And I have to ask you, because I'm holding a copy of this book that you gave me a couple weeks ago at the Lake County Meet, and it's titled Libertyville High School Athletic History, the first 100 years, 1918 to 2017. It's a 360-page book. that You've got 1,800 Libertyville athletes in there, 100 feature stories, takes you decade by decade through Libertyville history. Got some great names in there, great photographs. Tell us about this project, and for you, that this had to be a real passion project and a labor of love to put this together. Absolutely, and I never dreamed in a million years that I would be writing a book. Um, the, there, there is a story in the introduction about how I was on the uh, asked to be on the committee for the uh, to celebrate the Libertyville High School centennial school year, and we're searching for ideas on what to do. The idea of a video came up. My high school classmate had done one for our 40th reunion, where he put some had everyone send some pictures and put a video tape together on it. I thought that would be a great idea. I agreed to have that up that meant right away going through we have 100 um, yearbooks stored up in our library so i started going through all those taking taking pictures from uh anything that looked like it might be a story later eventually about six months later came up with the video uh 23 minute videotape um going through the 100 years so i i thought i was finished with that and uh then shortly thereafter we're we're back in the meetings in the fall of uh, 2017 coming up with other ways to celebrate the centennial school year and then the daily herald asked uh, us if we would write some articles on libertyville high school history not just athletics and i think there were 15 areas that you could uh, write an article on and i i right away i stuck my hand up said i like to do it on athletics and so I planned on writing uh, two articles a month for the Daily Herald, and there were many articles that were being turned in for about a month. After about probably by mid early November, I would say, the articles stopped coming in. So then I go at that point, I was on a roll. I decided I was going to write two articles a week and send them in. By the end of the school year, I had written 67 of the 82 that were written. And uh, I was really enjoying it. I could have kept going if they would let me, but they said school year's over, so the series is over. And a lot of people along the way had been suggesting that um, that I write a book as a way to archive them. And as soon as I realized there was no more writing to done, uh, writing to do, but a lot of people to write on, then I I figured you know I'm kind of halfway there since I've already got 67 articles written. <laughs> I I didn't realize obviously how long it would take um, to actually put a put a book together. 48 of the original Daily Herald articles made it into the book. I wrote 52 new feature stories and then did a, um, a season summary on all the highlights from each of the hundred uh, years. It was really not a problem writing. It was not a problem researching, uh, working with the publisher. That's that's not easy, you know, making the corrections and that kind of thing. Uh, but 16 months later, after I started uh, the process, the book came off the shelf and been selling well. I'm, I'm thumbing through it now, Dale. It's just, it's just unbelievable. Um, and what I'm amazed at is the number of photos you were able to, to get for the book, I mean, if you're going to tell a history of anything, you need photos, right? Especially yes, when you're talking 100 years. Um, right. I don't know how many photos you have in here, but this is amazing. And I think it really, and they, a lot of them run small, but enough where you could appreciate the, the era or the athlete. Uh, I, I'm just I'm blown away by this. Thank I thought you. I loved writing. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is crazy. How, yeah, how hard you. was it? You're welcome. How hard was it to secure the photos? For the book, oh, um, almost all of them are yearbook or student newspaper photos. Almost all of them. I I could have gone to, um, well, like 
for for the feature uh, story people, I would get some. I would get photos from them because I'm. I have to talk to them anyway. But like, if you look through the season summaries, each each uh, season will have like anywhere from two to four photographs uh, for boys and two to four for the girls. And I bet I could have got better photos if I would have contacted those people. Mm. But it, it would have been so hard to do that I just figured out I'll, I'll find the best photo that I can out of the yearbook. Yeah, the feature story subjects gave you some some really nice pictures and then you probably notice that there's a couple from the libertyville mundelein historical society they're actually probably the best photos that of, of all but the yearbook was the main um the main player for the photos yeah and dale it's if you're thumbing through this you don't have to be a libertyville graduate to recognize some of these names i mean you're talking some of the names that that are synonymous with kind of lake county and i mean you know name, again names like brett butler right who went on and, right. and playing the pro max sanders certainly longtime basketball coach at libertyville and then also i like about it too is you've you've got references and chapters there about okay in the 40s we had world war ii Right. right. That, 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 so how did that, how was Libertyville affected by that? And then, of course, you've got Title IX that came in in the 1970s. So not only is it a, you're walking people through a Libertyville uh, athletic history, but also just a slice of our own world history throughout that time. I'd imagine, as you and I talked there at Lake County, as somebody who has written a book myself, you know, you have ideas. And then you outline these things, but then as you do more research, right, you keep going down those rabbit holes, and that, and, right. and you get more curious, right, Dale? Right, absolutely. It's amazing some of the finds that I. Well, and I, the, the, the one last thing I would say is that uh, once I decided to write the book, I figured there's really no timetable on this one, so I'm going to go to the uh, Cook Library. The only other research I did after the yearbooks and the uh, student newspaper was to uh, look at microfilm from the Independent Register, which had a great sports section for many years from 1937 until it ended. Uh, the paper ended in 1987, and I found some people. I I had, they're in the yearbook, but their exploits, whatever you want to call them, were not really known from the yearbook. And I had, uh, well, like the um, 1948 um, woman javelin Olympian that we had. I never knew she existed. She's in the yearbook, in the 1935 yearbook, but I didn't know she was the 11-time U.S. national champion. I didn't know she was in the Olympics. So, yeah, there were a lot of uh, new finds once I started writing the book and started researching that popped up. It's fascinating. I'm, uh, uh, Dale, I'm on page 198 and 199 here. Now, there's a picture in here, Matt Foley, who's not a household name, but I, I know Matt Foley because uh, he's a priest, and right. my one of my best friends from college is a priest. Um, and so I met Matt 25 years ago when, when he was in the Mudderline Seminary there, and there's a picture of him in here with uh, the great... Chris Farley. So SNL fans would know the story. The great, you know, you know, guy who lives in the van down by the river story with, <laughs> with right or uh, the, the Matt Foley story. Right? Down it's, by the right. river, the, the inspirational speaker guy. So Matt Foley, that was the character name. But Farley, and and in, uh, there's a picture here in, in the book with Farley. So this uh, the story goes. I don't I don't even know if you know this, Dale. That Farley told. Matt Foley, when they were in college, said, man, if I ever get like a bit like on television, man, Matt Foley, that's the name I'm going to use. So sure enough, it's, it's Saturday Night Live, uh, and Farley calls Matt Foley that night and says, you got to watch tonight. Whatever you're doing, watch tonight. He goes, what are you talking about? He goes, just watch the show tonight. Watch Saturday Night Live tonight. And they uh, unveil the Matt Foley character, which is still makes me laugh just, just thinking about it. But uh, right. there's my guy, Matt Foley, in there with Chris Farley and um, Ike Riley. Um, so just, I mean, man, this is uh, this is one of these things you can just, like, keep flipping through um, all, all the well, time. And, and it's, it's a nice, it, easy read. Yeah, and it's, and, it's per, and it's perfect, like, during a wrestling meet because there's a lot of downtime. <laughs> yeah, you know, right, right Dale? Right. I mean, so I yeah. – seriously, like, for you, look, I know you're down there coaching, but honestly, I don't know how many copies you're able to squeeze <laughs> into the bus down there, but I'd be kind of right. walking around and hand these things out. Um, and real quick, as Dale, I know we get a we got to run here in a couple of minutes, but uh, uh, Joe and, and myself being a couple old newspaper guys, uh, tell us uh, very quickly about Ralph Giss. Oh, Absolutely. Ralph Giss, I, I thought that was the one feature story I was as proud of as any other one. I, I actually did really like that Matt Foley, Chris Farley, Ike Riley picture. That was classic. Yeah. It, it, 
perfect for what I was looking for. But Ralph Kiss, uh, there was some really good. He's just a great writer. He started writing for the Independent Register as a senior in high school in 1937. Um, he was submitting some stories to the Independent Register, and they started using them and liking them so much. He said, "Join the staff." And and he wasn't an athlete, but he loved athletics, so he's like, "You bet, I'll do it." And then the only time he wasn't writing for him was when he was away in war for about two and a half years, and then came back at his old job. Had a weekly. It was a weekly paper every Wednesday night, and his sports section was unbelievable for a weekly mm-hmm. paper. And um, I think some of the things I was writing about was uh, kind of his writing style. It was, it was kind of funny. You could even tease him about it. He laughed right along with it, but he wasn't changing. Um, but he never missed an all conference guy. Never missed an all state. Always had a really nice season summary on every team. It's all in microfilm and Cook Library. It was exactly what I needed to finish off the research for the book. Awesome. Hey, hey, Dale, we'll let you go here. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, lastly, how do you get the book? I mean, can you get it at the high school or you can order it online? Where, where can you get the yeah, book? Th- um, it, it's, it's appeared on all the class Facebook sites. It's appeared on my Facebook site. But honestly, the easiest way to get the book would be to go to Sports 11 at 838 South Milwaukee Avenue in Libertyville. Uh, they've always got some on, on, on display. And as soon as they run out, they tell me and I bring another batch over. Awesome. That would probably be the easiest way. Yeah, and I'll, we'll make sure we tweet out a copy of the link. There's also a link uh, at the D128, the district website. You can also get a copy sure. of, of the book as well. But, Dale, hey, thanks again for joining Joining us, congratulations on the book, and best of luck to the Wildcats here over the next Appreciate three days down down there at Champaign. All right. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Dale. Yep. Bye. That's Dale Eggert. Uh, great stuff. And, again, I, I brought a copy. Again, literally, I was at a wrestling meet in Lake County a few weeks ago. I happened to run to Dale. I knew Dale had written the book. Hands me a copy. I'm thumbing through it. I'm going like, oh, my goodness, like, this is good. I'm going to need a little more time going through this. And I want to have Dale on the show to tell these stories. and seem like the right time to do yeah, it. Yeah, from, from one author to another, I guess, in, in your case, uh, Mr. Uh, Boys of Brown. And so well, it also, yeah, well, and also yeah. you had the Ralph Gist guy who was a Joe yeah, Aguilar yeah. of the day. Yeah, how about you know, that? Writing those, writing those weekly columns, you know. So That's uh, awesome. He, and by the way, Dale Eggert, I mean, one of the finest gentlemen you will ever meet. I mean, you talk about the, the, the guys, the coaches we, we talk with on a regular basis bases or you know during that particular season but but dale eggert i mean um he's you know he's mr libertyville so perfect guy uh for that so fun show man jay Iden, that dale eggert, eggert, for the, you, that'll work phenomenal yeah. guest today real quick before we go our condolences to a member of the wrlr family don johnson and you know him yeah. as rusty's partner on football and basketball broadcast his father donald passed away last week and I want to extend our thoughts and prayers to don and his family and don't forget, Wakanda and Deerfield girls tonight. Uh, Rusty and Norm Mayer will be on the call. We'll be back next week with another episode of Lake County Sports Talk. For Joe, I'm John. Take care, everybody. See you.